What is it about the T54, the Russian tier nine medium that people don't like? Well, let's find out. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Splits. And today we're going to deep dive into the T54, the Russian tier nine medium. This is it. And as you can see, I mean, it's not bad. It's tier nine. And if you want to get your paws on two of the best tier 10 tech tree mediums, you've got to grind it. So what is it all about? Wow, well, hit points. It's got, well, not many. Let's be fair. Frontal armor. It's okay but the haul is pretty, pretty poor. Speed-wise, while it's not too bad, it's not too slow. And as you can see there, the average speed is about 40 kilometers. When I put in this gun, this is the 100 millimeter gun, well, it's got a decent aim time and it's got decent penetration with pretty standard damage. Same as the T62 in the object. However, when I stick in the other gun, which is the D54, you can see the reload times and everything go down. Yet you're yeah, only getting slightly more pen. When I compare it to the other mediums in its tier, well, you can see here its DPM is not too shabby. Same as the Type 64 and also the pattern. But look at that penetration. Penetration is not fantastic. In fact, it's the worst of all of the tier nines. Rate of fire, well, again, it's not great. Losing out to the Skoda, sorry, beating the Skoda and beating the T-54. Mm, shell velocity, again, not great. Caliber, not great. Aim time, not the best. So you can start to see what's going on here. And let's not even start with the five degrees of gun depression. Well, then again, you've got three degrees on the WZ. It's not a great tank. I mean, it's got an average win rate of 52, which isn't the worst, but it isn't the best. But it's got an average damage of 1400, which again, isn't the worst. So what is it about this tank? Because so many people love the T62 and the object. Well, in a word, it's actually the armor. And it's the turret armor that catches everybody off guard. Everybody thinks it's gonna be pretty solid on the turret, and it's not. It's actually really, really weak, weaker than you think. So this is what it looks like. So you can see there, if you go to the side of the gun, wow, you're gonna bounce. If, you know, you're gonna get some bounces here and there. However, and I'll show you a little trick. One of the problems with this tank, if you go just literally to the sides of the gun, just below those little observation ports, you will pen that turret. And of course, like most mediums, if you put an HE round into its rear, you'll get a lot of damage, as you'll see there. I mean, that's 529 damage knocked out. What if you stick it all down? Well, there you go, it's difficult to pen. However, if you see that little thing on top of the cupola, well, if you aim for that, you will pen each and every time without fail. It is a major, major flaw in this tank. Now, if I compare the turret to that of the T62A, well, as you can see, I mean, nothing is going to go through that. This thing is solid, and I mean rock solid compared to the T54. But is it all doom and gloom? Well, no, it is a beautiful, beautiful tank. And I am very surprised that a lot of people struggle in this tank. And I think they struggle because they don't really understand that whilst it looks like it should go haul down, the turret is easy to pen. The hull, funnily enough, is incredibly easy to pen. But aside from that, it has got quite a good gun. In fairness, it's pretty accurate for a Russian gun. Penetration, okay, it does struggle, but look at that. I mean, that's a snapshot on an RU at full power. And I, I got him. HE is very nice on this thing. And if you put this tank in the right place, okay, you're gonna struggle with the gun depression. Of course you are. But if you stick this tank in the right place, you can cause a lot of mayhem. And I'm just gonna sit here, and by the way, this is Port Bay. And if you're in a medium and you're not on this side of the map, then you're a fool because you can go on this side of the map and you can just turn into a big farmer and you can farm the damage until you are 
blue in the face or until the cows come home or whatever other sort of superlative you want to use. And that is all I'm going to do here. I'm just gonna sit here on this side of the map, virtually all of them are spotted, and I'm just going to farm. And I'm gonna farm my little heart out. I've already done 1600 damage here. Okay, you see that turret, easy to pen, but I've already done, you know, 1900 damage. I'll just show 2000. Trying to get his top hatch, doesn't work. So switch targets. And, you know, keep moving backwards and forwards, rocking and rolling. And guys, you are just absolutely able to just sit there and rain a hell of a lot of pain onto the enemy team. And you can see I've lost hardly any hit points really. And I've now dished out 2,400 damage. And I'm just having a whale of a time. And all we're doing is bleeding the other team. And that's it. And this is why this spot on this map, if you are a medium or a light, is absolutely vital. Especially in supremacy mode, if they've gone to that C cap. You need to get here. And, you know, unless you are doing a massive, really cool strat up the A cap in a tournament, I mean, if you're doing in a random game, guys, you need to be over this side, realistically. I've now done 3,471 damage. I've only taken one kill. I'm gonna probably top it up with 3,800. There we go. So 3,800 damage. I just farmed my little socks off and we had a fantastic time. That is what you can do with the T-54. Okay, we only got a first class, but look at the amount of credits I got. It's really nice. And I love that game. And that's what you can do in this tank. This tank is absolutely beautiful. And if you're aiming to get that T62 or Object 140, you are gonna have to play this thing. Simple as that. And I, I, I seriously, I implore you, don't free XP it. Grind this tank, get used to it. Because when you do get to the T62 and the Object 140, boy, you will have even more fun. This is me now rolling out on Canyon. And I'm actually gonna do a video on this map because a lot of people get this map wrong. Mainly because they saw the video that Bushka did or they now heard through the grapevine that you need to go to the B cap, which is great if you've got a tank that's got gun depression. If you don't have gun depression, however, you are absolutely gonna struggle at that B cap middle area. So what I generally do if I don't have gun depression is come to this area both in randoms and in supremacy. And as you can see, I have got almost a clear line of sight all the way over to the B cap. They are not able to take it. I am able to farm them. They're dropping back. So I know they're mostly over there. I'm gonna push around. Why? Because I can stay almost red lined at this side and I'm still gonna be able to put shots across to that B cap just like this. And I can continue farming. And like I said, for a Russian tank and a Russian gun, this tank is incredibly accurate. And that takes a lot of people by surprise. But as we saw earlier with the armor, it needs a little bit of TLC, guys. You know, you're not rock solid. Although I do get a lot of bounces in this game. So we've already done 1200 damage here. I get a nice bounce there. And that's because he snapshotted me, snapshotted me again. And he's, he's, he's hitting my turret, but the areas on the turret, have, you know, you've really got to take your time. So I've taken one kill, done 1600 damage, continuing with the farm. This is where it struggles with the penetration a little bit. There you go. But nothing to worry about. Now I've got all their tanks turning around to try and come over this side. Now they're, they're forgetting the middle area. It's no good for them anymore. We've farmed them. They can't get it. I'm now able to put almost three shots into this IS-3. Bottom plate, going for the tracks, trying to get the bottom plate every time. Even though I've only got five degrees of gun depression, five degrees of gun depression does work when you're this close because you can get the gun down enough to get the bottom plate. And as you can see there, he's snapshotting me every single time and he's getting the bounces, which is why I've lost no HP. And I've actually managed to deflect 1200 damage, almost 1300 in fact. So I'm gonna continue this, look at this, straight into the tracks, and this is the thing. If you're gonna try and get that XP up, guys, do those tracking shots. Track the tanks, because even if your teammates see, I'm just getting so much assistance damage because I'm tracking them. 
So, you know, this is great. I've done 1700, uh, sorry, 1100 assistance damage. Again, track him. This is what you should be doing. I'm going to sit out in the open because I've got all my HP. I'm going to take a shot from him, but I put a nice shot, really good shot into him. I'm going to go around this rock, wait for my reload, see if I can get anything in the 44. Yes, I can. Now I'm not concerned about him. Now I've done 3,500 damage. Go around the corner, try and track him again. Here we go. There we have it. Nice roll into the Yag Tiger. Now I've done 4,369 damage. Bounced 1,695. Only took one kill, but we get a mastery. Why? Because the assistance damage and everything was just spectacular. I mean, look at that. I mean, we've done 17 shots, 16 of 15, hit their target and penned. Damage that was 4,000. Damage with their assistance was 1,600. I mean, that is what really boosts that XP. So, guys, it's not as bad as you think the T-54. It's a beautiful little tank, and it preps you nicely for the T-62 or the Object 140. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That's been the T-54. By all means, comment everything below. If you haven't yet, please press subscribe. Lovely thing to do. I'd like to do a big shout out to all my members, both YouTube and Patreon. Without you, these videos would be a lot harder. And until the next time, guys, remember, stay safe, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking, because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.